Hey, good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you. July the 3rd, the eve of our nation's birthday for the morning briefing. What a gorgeous morning it is indeed. Thanks again for spending some time with me. I hope you enjoyed those photos in the very beginning of those yellowtail that were caught on board the Amigo with our dear friends, the 540 Slingers Club. They're a great bunch of guys. Had a lot of fun with 17 yellows at San Clemente Island yesterday on board the Amigo. I know why you're here. You want to get the fishing info, and I deeply appreciate you coming. But I just want to spend a few moments up front and kind of get us all centered. I know you're thinking, this guy's nuts. I mean, this is a fish report. What's he talking about? Well, you know, part of fishing is where it takes you to some of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth. And you get to witness some really incredible things. Some of them are not fishing related. So yesterday, Bob Gifford and I said, you know what, let's dig up some sandworms and go over to the Seal Beach Pier. And when we walked onto the Seal Beach Pier, I saw something, Bob saw something that was absolutely beautiful. So I, I wanna share that with you right now. And then I'll be back with the fishing update and a lot more. There's a lot going on. Bluefin, yellowfin, all kinds of sea bass and lots more. But check this out for a moment. This has to be one of the most beautiful sights these eyes have ever seen. That was truly an awesome moment. That guy, whoever he is, I presume that's a father and son, I could be wrong, but that father is an awesome guy. And that young man, you could just see how much he was enjoying the experience. Something that brings us all so much joy, the sea and the ocean. And while we're on this subject, you know, 4th of July, maybe not a time when we think of giving thanks. You know, that's Thanksgiving most of the time. But it is a time to give thanks for the great country we live in, the opportunities that we have. It really is a great time to do that. So. I just want to mention a couple of other things, and then I promise I'm going to get into the fishing stuff with you here in a moment. Eddie Leland, Captain Eddie Leland, our good friend. Many of you know, some of you don't know, but Eddie's been battling cancer, and I'll tell you, he is so brave and doing such a great job, and there's no doubt in my mind he will prevail in this battle because mostly I have some really, really good friends. So another member of the Freedman Adventures family is Chef Jason. Chef Jason is over there on 4th Street in Long Beach at Shoals, And, you know, he's wild and he's crazy. I call him the life of the party. He's a lot of fun, but he also has a heart of gold. So he just sent me a message before I came on the morning briefing and said, hey, get your butt over here to Shoals and pick up this homemade soup I made for Eddie. And, you know, it's just that kind of thing that really, really centers you, makes you understand that there's a lot of really great people in our country that are reaching out to help others. And real quick, just two other guys, Sam De La Torre and Diego Nuno, who's a deckhand on board the Royal Star. He lives in Ensenada. Diego was born on the island of Cedro, Cedros, okay? And um, we're, we're all working together. I'm not saying this is gonna come together, but here's the plan. All of the things that you've donated, all that stuff, we may take to Cedros Island this Christmas and distribute to some people who really need it. And it was Sam De La Torre's idea to give back to some of the communities that we as fishermen have been fishing in for so many years. So all great stuff. I know it was a long intro, but I'm ready to go. Here we go. Let's get into the fishing and start talking about some great stuff that is going on. All right. So we've got offshore. Let's talk about that first of all. You got two options. You got Tanner Bank, Cortez, out in that neck of the woods where there's been some great nighttime fishing, especially for the long range guys because it's windy out there right now so those big boys can hang in there. They're having some really good nighttime fishing on bluefin and tuna. The grade is mostly 20 to 60. Every once in a while you see a bigger one and heavier jigs, 300 grams in that range have been working best of all. Sinking them down and then getting a bite on those knife jigs, the Zakana jigs, 
um, you know, flat falls, all of those have been working really well, although those knife jigs do get you down there in a hurry. Fishing heavier tackle, yes, you definitely want to do that. You need a two-speed with that 80 to 130 pound on it, and the weather's up out there. It's nasty, but we're going to go kind of like this over this next week where it gets moderate. And it's not going to get flat calm by any stretch of the imagination, but it may moderate out there, and this bluefin is definitely on the move right now. We saw this last year. This migration starts out down the Baja coast, moves up, moves out to San Clemente Island, and then it floods out there to the banks. And we've seen that when it gets on the bank, it really wants to chew. And we are definitely seeing that right now. Now, also, you know, we had that big bluefin tuna recently caught off El Segundo, California, on a dropper loop with squid. I mean, how crazy is that? And I'm going to show you a little video here right now, and I'll leave the audio in there so you can hear it. But another guy who's a Freedman Adventures family member, his name is Carlos. He was at Palos Verdes yesterday, looked out, and he said he saw a school of bluefin tuna. And before I show it to you, I asked Bob Osborne, our tuna albacore expert, if that were plausible. And he said, this is the time of the year when that bluefin is moving out to the banks, out to Clemente, moving around. He said it wouldn't surprise him if it were true. So take a look and please feel free to leave a comment here on YouTube. I'd love to see what you think. Is that a school of bluefin? Is it not? Is Carlos right on or is he crazy? Carlos doesn't mind. He's got thick skin just like me. Take a look and I'll be right back. Here's Carlos. Yeah, that is tuna for sure. Oh, you see that one breach? Yep. It's a nice little spot. There's another spot out there. All right, so don't forget, you can leave uh, a comment on YouTube. Let us know what you think. Some crazy stuff going on here this morning. I love it. And hopefully we are going to see this weather finally come down and we can get back to some good fishing. All right, so down the Baja Coast, many boats are going down that way because the weather's much better right now. And down in that neck of the woods, we continue to see more Dorado, more yellowtail, more yellow fan tuna. It's just part of the natural progression that we see during this time of the year. Now, some guys are saying, oh yeah, we're gonna have albacore this year with the yellow fin and the Dorado and all that. That makes perfect sense. And what they're referring to is those are warm water species. Albacore is a cooler water species. Well, some of you are not as ancient as I am, but we all remember us old guys popping out of Point Loma and saying, do you want to go down the Baja coast or do you want to go to the Outer Banks and catch albacore? We've seen that many times, many years before, when that scenario paints itself. That scenario in terms of oceanography right now is there. We have that exact scenario. Now, will the albacore show up? We're saying yes. Many of you are saying no, they're extinct. Many of you don't know. Actually, that's me. You know, We don't know, but we're guessing at it. But in terms of oceanography, down the coast, we've got that warm water. Outer banks, we've got that perfect albacore water with a lot of anchovy. Only time will tell if I blow it again this year. And, you know, for those of you who are perfect out there, I know it's hard when you make a mistake. But for me, I make errors every single day. So just another one in my book doesn't really affect me all that much. All right. So down the coast, all that stuff pushing up. And it's in range right now for the boats leaving at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. also. No huge numbers, but every once in a while getting a nice little piece of that stuff. And as we move along, that's going to progress until it gets really good. Incidentally, don't forget, July the 22nd on the Malahini, we are going to be on board. I can't wait. My friend Bill Wilkerson, so many great members of the Freedman Adventure family have already signed up. That is going to be a fantastic trip. I cannot wait to do that. All right, so there's your offshore scene right now. We do have some weather. We're going to be dealing with it for several days now. We'll see how that all plays out. On those 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. boats, uh, on those trips that are going down the Baja coast, more than likely you're not going to run into that giant bluefin tuna. More than likely you're not going to need that really heavy gear. If you have it, bring it, okay? You just never know. I mean, the way this season is going, 
it changes from day to day. So bring some heavy stuff and you'll be in really, really good shape. And again, we'll keep watching that for you very, very closely as we move you in to the 4th of July. All right, let's talk islands and start you down there in Ensenada. More yellowtail, Toda Santos, Barracuda. Same kind of a thing, good bass fishing. So that is progressing along nicely. Many boats are starting to hit that a little bit more. Not wide open, and there's some cooler water that moved into the island for a little bit, but now it's much warmer and biting again. So that's a pretty good area. Surface iron's working well out there, and there's still some lings and rockfish that you can fall back on if you do not make it happen. At the Coronado Islands area, some darn good fishing on quality grade yellowtail. It's not wide open, but it is damn decent fishing for the most part. San Diego yesterday, 30 yellowtail. On the ground, they had 19 yellowtail. And they also have a mix of barracuda, bonita, rockfish, sculpin, um, you know, like that calico bass. Pretty darn good in most cases at the Coronado Islands. Definitely want to have fluorocarbon with you. That makes a big difference. We like Opsin, www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA when you check out and you'll get a free gift as well as a handwritten note from our friend Greg Brown. So once again, that floral really does make a difference. Fish that and you should be in really good shape. And you do need a passport if you're headed to the Coronado Island, so make sure you take care of that. All right, as we move you up, let's talk San Clemente Island. You saw all those photos in the very beginning. The guys from 540 Slingers, a group of really fun, loving, great guys out there having a lot of fun. 17 yellows on board the Amigo, nothing wrong with that kind of a score. They're in the lee of the island on the front side where they're finding favorable conditions. We're gonna have those same kind of conditions it looks like for our two day trip on board the Pride that is leaving at a special time, 6 p.m. Tuesday afternoon or evening, whatever you wanna call that. And I'll have that little spread out for you in the morning, but we could fish there. We're gonna try to go north for sea bass. We'll just see how this weather lays out for us and Captain Sean Roberts and Michael on board the Pride, they're gonna make sure that they do what is best for each and every one of you. Two days on the water sounds absolutely wonderful to me. The Fury 33 yellowtail yesterday for a nice hit. Thunderbird with 20 plus on a yellowtail and you have a mix over there. You've got some barracuda time, some calico bass, some bonita bouncing around Clemente. So looking pretty good out there. And hopefully that is gonna to continue to head in the right direction. Catalina Island, well, one thing you get at Cap for the 4th of July is an increase in boat pressure. And man, there's a lot of boats around there. You know, you get your chum line going, you see the fish walking up the line, fish are boiling and then a jet ski races through your chum line and screws everything up. Now, I'm not saying that's the case for everybody over there, but it certainly is something to factor in to the equation. Fly line Chovy, man, has that been working well at Catalina Island? The Triton guys say a fly line Chovy, it's almost like the candy bait right now, really worked well catching all their fish on that. If you get Chovy, you're blessed. Caught three yellowtail on that the other day. The Gale Force with a couple of yellows the other day. Other guys over there picking at some yellows. Occasional sea bass, not so much here recently. And then, you know, Calico Bass, a lot of shorts, but some legals in there. And also a few hits on the gars, some barracuda around. Surface iron is a lot of fun for doing that. All right, in addition to that, we take a look, of course, at the Channel Islands, and they've got some weather up there right now. Some of the boats still slamming on the white sea bass. They have had incredible white sea bass fishing up there in that neck of the woods beyond belief. That has been the epicenter of sea bass fishing for the past several years. And while we earlier this year predicted that that would flood up this way, it did. We've had bites in Catalina that have been really good, Clemente that have been good. There's still fish there. The epicenter where it really happens has been the Channel Islands. Those guys are running and gunning. They are fishing 10 to 12 ounce torpedoes in this nasty weather. Definitely want to have some sinkers that are heavier. Sometimes it's a sliding egg sinker, fluorocarbon, 30 or 40, de definitely necessary. And the sea bass bite up there has been beyond belief. The weather is having a detrimental effect on it, but some guys still in on it. A lot of guys are not even reporting it, keeping a lid on it, but there is still some really good hits up there. 
and I don't know when that's going to end. I think you're going to see good sea bass fishing up there when you have nice weather. You're going to see it through July. So really a great place to fish. Ventura sport fishing along the coast. They have the Island Spirit and they also have the California and the Endeavor, of course, does their thing every single day. So Ventura sport fishing, 805-676-3474. You hear that? You hear that? I hope you can hear that. When you hear that and those birds start picking and you're at the beach, there is bait getting shoved up. I'm out of here. See you later. I'm going to go get my chrome crocodile. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's a good signal. Those things, they are all over the, the water here. They are picking. They are picking. That's a really good sign. Really, really good sign. All right. Sorry. I got distracted there for a moment. So uh, let's take you to the coast now. Ensenada area. We have some barracuda biting down there. Pretty good at times. Uh, a little bit of bonita, calico bass few sand bass down there in that neck of the woods, San Diego area, some calico bass, rockfish, you barracuda, same thing around Dana. At times that bass bite around Dana has been very, very good along the kelp lines, uh, calico bass, a lot of shorts in there. Up here in the San Pedro area, starting to run into more bar barracuda again. There's sculpin if you want that, and hopefully that bass bite gets going again. We had some really good early sand and calico bass fishing. Our conditions deteriorated in here. But it looks pretty darn nice right now, so hopefully that's going to continue to head in the right direction. Um, taking a look at some of the boys who had Barracuda up and down the coast. Nice little sprinkling of gar up and down the coast right now. Marina Del Rey had 24 Barracuda, the Redondo Special, 27 Barracuda, all the way up north there on the Coral Sea. Gentleman asked me to start covering Santa Barbara, and sometimes I blow that and I apologize to you, but. I'm making that part of my daily thing. That 87 Barracuda on the Coral Sea up there in Santa Barbara, and there's not a darn thing wrong with that. Hopefully we'll see more of it. I'm sure Cody on the Island Spirit out of Ventura, as well as the California, are gonna get more of a piece of that. Some surface iron is a great way to get prepared for that. So keep that in mind. And a little bit of bass up there in the Redondo Beach area, and. Hey, if Carlos is right, who knows? We might be catching bluefin tuna again in the Santa Monica Bay. We have one this year, and uh, I'll tell you, man, I remember those days. You've heard me blah, blah, blah about my ancient history before, so I, I won't put you through that uh, harassment again here this morning. All right, um, surf fishing, same thing with these birds. I love that sound. That. You know, when you hear that, that is a time when yellowfin croaker may be spawning, and you get on that and throw a chrome crocodile, that's a good tip for you. Digging up some natural baits like sandworms is also a good tip. Don't forget big fish bait and tackle on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway. They've got all your gear and bait and everything else. Same with Sam De La Torre over there at Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. Down there around San Diego, some really good halibut fishing on short fish same thing as you move up to the dana point area lucky crab lures probably your best way to go but i catch them on the chrome crocodile and if you have any frozen grunion that is also another good way to go by the way now grunion season is open so on the next grunion run you'll be able to harvest those little devil only 30 of them the rules have changed on that so you can uh, get your kids all together get 30 for each person and uh freeze them and keep them. They really are a magnificent bait. It's Dave Hansen, my good friend, and it's his wife's birthday, Kelly. Happy birthday, Kelly. As Dave says, what eats grunion? Or he asked that question, and the answer is everything. So that is absolutely true. Um, around here, down in Bolsa Chica, we've seen some yellowfin croaker, spotfin croaker, a few halibut, and a lot more of the guitar fish and those type of species run, running around here. Up there on the Seal Beach Pier yesterday, Bob Gifford and I, where we saw that really beautiful scene with the father in the wheelchair, uh, we were goofing around there. We ran into a couple of guys, Paul and Kevin, and they were fishing that six pound test with a little plastic lure, and they caught two or three nice yellowfin croaker while we were sitting there doing nothing. Actually, I did catch another one of those giant leopard sharks yesterday. I'm exaggerating. 
like that. We were fishing sandworms, and we probably were fishing a little bit heavier tackle than we should have, although Bob dropped down to six pounds and couldn't get a bite. But a lot of fun there on the pier, a lot of great people walking by, a lot of great people to say hello to, and absolutely gorgeous weather. That is for sure. Up there around Topaz Rock Jetty and a lot of these beaches, don't forget Corbina are here. California Corbina with a B. Um, fishing with mussel or sand crabs or sandworms. Light line, six pounds, a great way to go. And you get a nice Corvina or even a small Corvina on six and you'll have the time of your life. Remember, those fish are right there. You don't have to make a long cast. Six feet, 10 feet. You know, sometimes you're overcasting at that. Sight fishing with a good pair of polarized glasses. You see those things, get up in front of them, lay your bait about 10 feet, they'll swim in and bite it. It's a great way to make things happen. All right, our Pride two-day trip. Still have a little bit of room if you want to join us. Send me a text at 676, pardon me, at 657-227-6459. Just send me a text. I'll send you the info. We'll see you Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we'll put a little buffet out at the Freeman Adventurers podcast studio. You can come in, have a sandwich, and have some food, and then off we will go at 6 p.m. Hopefully, we're going to be able to fish some sea bass. That weather looks pretty good on Wednesday and Thursday. Looks like we're going to get bumped around a little on Tuesday, but we'll see how that all plays out. And once again, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy day to spend with us as we near the 4th of July and celebrate our nation's birthday and all that we have to be thankful for. And as a guy who wanders around the world a lot, we have so much to be grateful for. I'm grateful for each and every one of you who make Freedman Adventures so strong. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll be back with lots more in coming days.